thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Olivia and I'm a gender affirming voice teacher. And um, 2024 is right around the corner. 2024, staring us in the face. It feels like we're in the future. Um, I saw a self-driving car in the street the other day and <laughs> yeah, we're in the future. We are. So we've got the holiday season coming up first, which can be stressful and can be, uh, you know, emotional, challenging in, in different ways. It can also bring a lot of joy. Um, so it can just be a really emotional time no matter what's going on in your life, uh, or what your family situation is. Um, so first we gotta get through that. Um, but in the new year, Obviously, it's a time when many of us think about making resolutions. And resolutions, um, you know, it's a tough thing because making positive changes in your life is wonderful. But I also, I feel like in our society, there's a little bit of you must be improving yourself and doing everything to be the best person on the planet constantly, you know, the wellness industry and whatever it is, you know, social media is like, you have to look perfect constantly and all these things. Um, but of course there is something to be said for moving in the direction of things that you want, goals that you have. So if you have a goal of vocal feminization, let's say in the new year, um, that's something that can feel overwhelming because you might feel like, oh, I want to get there. Um, but it's really important in order to keep that resolution or to keep that goal in mind, to, to set some things in place, to make sure that you're able to stay on track and, and stick with that goal. I read a statistic that just 9% of people who make New Year's resolutions actually stick to them. And it, it makes a lot of sense because a lot of us just like make a ton of resolutions. Like I'm gonna be a whole new person by January 31st. And then, you know, maybe you, you, you fall off of some of those things because there's so much pressure. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about five things that can help you uh, make your resolution of vocal feminization achievable in this new year. So number one is to get really clear about what your goals are and to set achievable goals along the way. Uh, because if you have this big, massive, overarching goal, it can be hard to know like when you have actually arrived. So for instance, if you're like, I wanna be healthier this year, and that's your goal, like that is a great goal, but how do you know what healthier is? When do you know when you've gotten there? So maybe you can set a goal then of saying, I'm gonna incorporate vegetables into every dinner that I make in the month of January. So that you always have a veggie, whatever. And so that is moving toward a more nutritious way of eating, for instance. So if we're gonna apply that to vocal feminization, um, your goal might be simple. It might be, I want a feminine perceived voice. But that can feel like a really overwhelming and big goal when you don't have little goals in order to get there. So you could start with things like, I'm gonna practice at least three times a week. And once you start making sure that you're practicing three times a week, maybe you up it to five times a week. And and you can go, go from there and then you can check things off. I find that very satisfying to check things off in a planner or um, you know your notes app or something like that um, so that you know, okay, I know clearly what my goal is and I can stick to that. Number two is creating habits. So um, habits can be good, they can be bad, they can be neutral, they can be anything. Um, I have a habit of going to bed too late and then having a hard time waking up in the morning. And that is a habit I try to fight a lot, but I end up sliding back into my old tricks. So for me to actually go to bed at a reasonable hour, reading a book before bed instead of looking at my phone is really helpful for me. And so when I am on a good kick, 
with my going to sleep early habit. Um, I use the two minute rule. The two minute rule is something that I, I read about in James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. Um, but basically it's, it creates this, um, you're creating a habit by starting to do something for only two minutes. So I say to myself, okay, if you just read your book for two minutes, then you can do whatever you want. But oftentimes when I go and read my book for two minutes, I want to keep going and then I'm on the right track with my habit. Um, and two minutes doesn't seem like that big of a, a deal. So if you are saying to yourself, like, I don't want to practice, I don't want to, you know, I don't feel like it. If you have made a goal of practicing for an hour that day, that you're going to be more likely to, to skip out on it because you're like, oh, it's going to take me an hour. I don't want to practice for an hour. But if you say, okay, I'm going to practice for two minutes and then that's going to be it. And that's, that's great to get started with that habit and bringing your attention to your voice because that, that piece of like building awareness and like just being more aware of your voice is, is huge. So in the spirit of the two minute rule, this January, I'm going to be doing a challenge, a two minute challenge. Um, so I'm going to be putting out a one minute video every, um, every day in the month of January. And um, so you can watch that video for one minute and then you can do some warm up exercises for, for one minute. And that's gonna be your two minutes. And if that progresses from there, that's fabulous. But as long as you're doing your, your two minutes, you are um, building that habit around working on your voice. So I would love if you joined me in this challenge. So you can follow along with my daily videos here on YouTube, YouTube Shorts, or on TikTok, whatever platform you like. And you can download the free uh, challenge, practice challenge guide, um, where you can check off every day that you've done your, your two minutes of practice. So click the link below so that you can get your copy of the PDF. Number three is building community. Doing things all on your own is great. It can feel empowering and you know, you don't need anybody and you, you get out there and do it. But really human connection and feeling understood and um, you know, cared for is also amazing. It's really wonderful when you're going through something that is an emotional process. And vocal work, voice training is, is emotional. You know, your voice is a part of you. And so when you are struggling with things, when you are having success with your voice, when you're learning about something new, it's wonderful to be able to share uh, with, with somebody who, who really understands the process that you're going through. Um, so yeah, community is really important. There's so many great virtual platforms, obviously, to connect with people like Reddit, um, TikTok, YouTube, of course, here, um, and, you know, so many VR kinds of ways to connect with people. So there are a lot of online ways to connect. Group classes and practice sessions, these are also great ways that you can uh, build, build community. I'm actually running a new group class starting in February 2024. It's going to be a small group class, which I think is ideal because you'll, you know, you get one-on-one -on -one instruction from me, but you also get to create that, that space with other people and learn from other people what things are working for them. Um, I think that that's always really helpful too. So um, I also do bi-weekly practice sessions um, starting, starting next year. Those will start in January again. Um, for people in my programs. So if those things are interesting to you, go down to the description and you will find a link. Number four is to find ways to keep yourself accountable. So obviously we were just talking about building community. So having a, you know, a practice buddy, somebody you can get together and practice with, um, or text to, to share, oh, I just practiced or, oh, I just used my voice when I went out to get a cup of coffee. Um, here's how it went. Those kinds of relationships can be so 
lovely and a way to really keep you on track and accountable during this process. Another way to stay accountable is to keep a practice journal or a practice log, or if you, you know, write it out if you have a, a paper planner or just in your Google calendar or whatever, um, to make a note of when you practice and so that you can see. Because sometimes it's it's like shocking when you're like, oh yeah, I think I've practiced this week. And if you are have a habit of writing it down, then you're like, oh wait, no, I only practiced on Tuesday. Uh, but it's funny like what the mind can do when, when you're like, yeah, I think I did, I must have, right? Um, you know, so that can kind of help keep you on track. And also, you know, so satisfying, write it down. I did it, check it off the list, love it. There's also a lot of apps, of course, you can use like Voice Tools is, is a great free app that you can use to check in. You can, uh, you know, for instance, make recordings every day. Say, okay, I'm gonna make sure I do a recording just to kind of track my pitch progress if that's something that you're working on. Um, or to just get, you know, uh, a, a recording to look back on later, um, whether or not you listen to it at that moment, but just to have a gauge of like, okay, here's where I am today. So you know where you are in that process as you continue. And finally, rewarding yourself. That's a very important part of staying accountable, okay? So, you know, if you complete whatever goal, whatever smaller goal that you have for yourself, so maybe it's it's practicing three times a week, you did that, so what is your reward? You know, make that uh, a really fun thing that you love to do, a favorite coffee shop or a store you like to shop at, um, you know, a movie you wanna see. Try and do something special for yourself when you have succeeded. Number five is putting yourself out of your comfort zone. Now this can be really challenging because the things that we're used to are comfortable. Even if we are not satisfied exactly with, with what's going on in our lives, uh, maybe you're not satisfied with where your voice is, um, you know, it's what you know. It's, it's what you already know. So putting yourself out of your comfort zone into a place where you could, you know, you could try and, and you could fail. There's a possibility that you could feel like you fail at something. But there's also a big possibility of making changes and seeing growth in yourself and making progress and, and enjoying the parts of your voice that maybe you don't enjoy now. So I've got a few ways that you can put yourself out of your comfort zone this new year. Of course, we have the two minute challenge coming up in the month of January. We've got a group class coming up in February. And um, you can of course sign up for a consultation with me to kind of dip your toe in the water. We can get to know each other and you know, kind of see if this is something that you want to work on. So there is no quick fix or you know, magic exercise that's going to take you to your ideal voice overnight. This is something that takes time. Um, and so it can feel like a big overwhelming thing. But I hope that these ways of, of kind of thinking about your goal can help to break things down, help to know that you don't have to get there all at once and to you know hopefully enjoy the process um, a little bit along the way. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful and um, I'll see you in the next one.